let us continue by writing p implies q's contrapositive converse and inverse so given p and q p implies q will be false only when p is true and q is false in all other cases p implies q is true the contrapositive of p implies q is the uh, negation of q implies negation of p which is uh, again you can observe it is equivalent to p implies q then the converse of p implies q is nothing but q implies p here the truth table for q implies p will be 1 0 1 1 and the inverse of p implies q is nothing but negation of p implies negation of q which is here 1 0 1 1 so from this what we can observe here is given p implies q it is equal to its contrapositive which is negation of q implies negation of p and uh, given q implies p its contrapositive will be negation of p implies negation of q so which are again equivalent so that's what here we have written note one note one p implies q is equivalent to negation of q implies negation of p so that is the implication is equivalent to its contrapositive and the second one here q implies p is equivalent to its contrapositive which is uh, negation of p implies negation of q that is converse and inverse are of p implies q are equivalent next uh, we'll see how to write the converse inverse and contrapositive of the implication so the first one if sun is shining then it is warm so we'll first convert this sentence into a proposition statement or a statement so let us uh, assume p is sun is shining and q is it is warm so then now this if sun is shining then it is warm can be written as p implies q so now we know that the converse of p implies q is nothing but q implies p so in the sentence form if you write we can write it as if it is warm then sun is shining next is inverse inverse of p implies q is negation of p implies negation of q so which is nothing but so p is nothing but sun is shining so negation of p is if sun is not shining it is not warm then the contrapositive is negation of q implies negation of p which is if it is not warm then sun is not shining second one if it is a dog then it barks so let p is it is a dog then q is it barks then this given statement can be written as p implies q so we know that converse of p implies q is q implies p so we know that q is nothing but it barks so if it barks or if we can write if dog barks then it is uh, if it barks then it is a dog then the inverse is nothing but negation of p implies negation of q so if it is not a dog then it does not bark and the contrapositive is nothing but negation of q implies negation of p which is if it does not bark then it is not a dog so likewise you can write the converse of the following statements in words that is if you buy colgate then your children will brush longer that is for this the first one if your children will brush longer then you can buy the colgate that is a converse second one when you serve import imported sparkling water it shows that you had good taste for this also you can try to write the converse so for the remaining questions you can try your own Again, these are some exercises. Next is the rules of inference. So, an argument P1 and P2 and Pn implies Q. All these premises or we call it as the hypothesis. If they are true, we can arrive at the conclusion Q is a valid argument if it is equivalent to 
P1 and P2 and so on and it implies Q is a tautology. That means when P1, P2, Pn are all true, then we can arrive at clue Q is a valid argument when this implication is a tautology. So the implication is tautology when this Q is also true. So example for rules of inference. So the statements P refers to Roger studies. Q refers to Roger or Roger plays tennis. R represents Roger passes discrete mathematics. And suppose the premises are if Roger studies then he will pass discrete maths. Second premise is if Roger does not play tennis then he will study. The third premise is Roger failed discrete mathematics. So now we have to determine whether the argument P1 and P2 and P3 implies Q. So where Q is Roger plays tennis. So P1 if it is true that is nothing but if Roger studies then he will pass the discrete maths can be written as P implies R because P represents Roger studies and uh, he will pass discrete math is nothing but it is R. So P1 is nothing but P implies R and P2 is nothing but not of Q implies P and P3 is nothing but negation of R. R is nothing but Roger did not pass discrete maths. So now when P1 is true, P2 is too true and P3 is true, can we arrive at Q? That's what we have to prove it. Now here, if P1 is true, P2 is true and P3 is true implies Q is equivalent to P implies R and not of Q implies P and not of R. That's what here we have replaced P1 by P implies R, P2 by negation of Q implies P and P3 by negation of R implies Q. So now you can prepare the truth table to show that it is a tautology. So which is a tautology therefore the original argument is true and is a valid conclusion. So you can use a uh, truth table to show that this is a tautology. So this truth table because we have three variables p, q and r. So you will be having 2 to the power of 3 which is uh, 8 rows. So, P, Q, R are the premises here. So, we will have 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. And uh, we have to prepare the truth table for this expression. P implies R, negation of Q implies P, and negation of R implies Q. So, if you can observe, you can prepare the table, you can observe that this whole expression is a tautology indicating in all the cases of P, Q, R values. So, the result is 1. Next is, uh, so they have already given this uh, statement, you have to show that it is a tautology. So for each of, you have first identify how many variables are there. So you have P, R and S. So you will be having 2 power 3 which is 8 different combinations for these P, R, S values. And if you prepare the table again, you can observe that the result is always 1 which indicates it is a tautology. So, this is a valid argument. If P and Q are any arbitrary statements such that P implies Q is a tautology, then we say that P logically implies Q and we write P double arrow, double sided, uh, double uh, lined with one side and right Q. To denote this situation, P, if and only if Q, this is we call it as P logically implies Q, means P if and only if Q is a tautology. P implies, double implies Q, means P, if P then Q is a tautology. So if P and uh, P implies Q is a tautology, we say that P implies Q. rules of inference. So these rules of inference are used to validate or invalidate a logical implication without 
resorting to the truth table. So previously we have shown that this is a valid argument or it's a valid reasoning by making use of truth table. Now we will not use the truth table method. We will use the rules of inferences to prove the validity or invalidity of the logical implication. So for which we will use some rules of inference. The first rule is called as a modus ponens or a method of affirming or it is also called as rule of detachment. So here what is the meaning of this modus ponens is that if P is true and P implies Q is true which implies Q. So what is the meaning here is if P is always true and P implies Q is always true then we can say that Q is always true. So that is we can write it as P is true, P implies Q is true therefore Q is true. So this we call it as modus ponens root. So why we can uh, say this is true here is when P is true so the left hand side P is always 1 and we know that P implies Q is also true so which indicates that Q also has to be true therefore we can write therefore Q. So if P is not true then uh, for irrespective of what is the value of Q so this P implies Q will be true. At that time we cannot say that Q is always true. So Q could be either true or false but when P is true definitely for the implication P implies Q to be true Q has to be true. Therefore we can say that if P is true and if P implies Q is true therefore Q has to be true. So this is a proof for mod exponents that is P and P implies Q that is this is a premise one this is a second premise so P, which is equivalent to P and we know that P implies Q is negation of P or Q since P is true therefore we can say that P is replaced by true and uh, not of P or Q so since uh, P is true not of P will be false it is written by F0 or Q by using idempotent law. Now F0 or Q is nothing but F0 or Q and T by using idempotent law it is equivalent to F0 or Q. So now again if you apply the idempotent law you will be seeing that F0 or Q that is F0 is nothing but false. False or Q depends on the result will depend on Q therefore it is Q.